What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> we just hit 400 subscribers. Actually, I'm only 444. What the fuck? <laughs> So apparently I have read 14 books this month. They're all pretty short, but hey, I only read three last month. First book that I read in May was More Weird Things Customer Satan Bookshops by Jen Campbell. The first book, which is just weird things, I used to like peek through when I was a bookseller because honestly that shit happens. People will ask you for the girl with the dragon and the baboon. They will ask you for books written by Jane Eyre. Agnes is knickers and it's like oh you mean Angus thongs and whatever snogging shite. This was just a hilarious collection of things customers say and do. Next I read The Lost Path by Amelie Fleche and this was a net galley arc and it's a little like graphic novel and it was just so pretty and like it was just so cute. It was also very weird. It's very kind of fantastical and actually I don't even know like does that did that really happen or was it just a story that like, the, the characters made up as they went along through this like forest? I don't know but it was just such a cute little story and I gave that five stars. Next I've read probably one of my favourite books, Out of the Blue by Sophie Cameron. This was incredible. I gave this five stars and I just I can't explain it. I mentioned I believe in my TBR for the month I believe. I talked about how it's set in Edinburgh and I was so excited to read a book with like dealing with places that I know really well and that was great but I don't know if I said it in the video, but I've said to people before how I live in like a smaller town, like no one, no one's heard of it. Like it's not one of those towns people are like, oh yeah, I know where that is. They're like, where? I've always been like, N my, my little town, like nobody gives a shit about Edinburgh is the closest I'm gonna get. And then there's a scene, because basically this is all about angels falling to earth. Well, angels. And the main character ends up like having to look after one that's like alive. It, I, I, I can't explain these things. Synopsises of me don't work. Basically, without any spoilers, there are a group of people who have like a HQ and our main character has to go there. And when they're trying to find out where it is, somebody who knows is like, well, I don't know anything about it apart from it's an old power plant that's like not in business anymore. And I was like, cool, there's plenty of power plants. And then the character goes, wait, is it by the sea and has two massive chimneys and is about to be demolished? And I'm like, hold the fuck up. The power plant that I grew up next to in my little town had two big chimneys and got demolished recently. And I live by the sea. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> I live in the middle of nowhere and although it isn't mentioned by name, it's in a book that's really good. <laughs> this blows my mind. Like, I picked this up on a whim because of the beautiful cover, oh, this is a proof cover, but you know, and the fact that it was set in Edinburgh, thinking that's as close as I'm gonna get to little old hometown of mine. Of course it has to be where the bad guys live, I'm all for that, but you know. <laughs> so yeah, like, I was really enjoying the book, but when it got to like in like three quarters of the way through and that happened, I was like, sold, love it, five stars, like, yes. That just, it made my life having where I live in a book. Oh my God. I'm going to stop talking about this now because I've got a lot more to discuss. I then read another NetGalley arc and this was Sheets by Brenna Thummier. No idea. And this is another graphic novel and it's basically like about ghosts or like there's like ghosts from another world but this one wants to go back to like the real world. He does but he ends up in a laundry and oh uh, like the story of the girl working in the laundry is beautiful and then this little ghost guy just keeps making problems for her but like oh but then he helps her and it's just it's such a cute 
warm-hearted little story. I need a physical copy. The book uses my favourite colour scheme, which are like blues and pinks, like Dare to Fall. Oh, I just, I love it. I absolutely am obsessed. I gave this one five stars as well. Next was a four star read, and this was another Net Galley arc of a graphic novel, which was The Big Empty Life of Alphonse Tabaret by Sibylline Desmaziers and Jerome Daviau. I haven't studied French in months. I've lost all sense of the language. This was cute. It was also another kind of confusing book, a little bit like The Lost Path, but essentially this character is made by like the big man in the sky and it's all fine like he's friendly with the guy but then he like wants to be on his own or something so he does and then he walks through this like forest and meets a very strange cast of characters and it doesn't make very much sense but that's what makes it so endearing. It's one of those that doesn't really have a point <laughs> it's just it just exists. Next I read Selected Poems by T.S. Eliot and I didn't give this any stars. I didn't rate it. I wanted to adore this. Like I talked about how I loved the musical Cats so I really wanted to get into the poet. There were sections that I highlighted and you know all that but I just didn't connect with this and I'm gonna be that person. I'm gonna be that basic bitch that says things like Rupee Kaur's Milk and Honey. I connected with that, you know, Amanda Lovelace, the princess saves herself in this one. I could have highlighted like the entire thing, not quite, but you know, there's lots of that book that I've highlighted that really connected with me, that resonated with me. This I just didn't understand. It wasn't bad, it just, I just kind of felt like they were words on a page and I wasn't really getting a story from them, which I was what I was hoping for. I'm definitely willing to give T.S. Eliot another try. I don't know if it was just these poems in particular. I'm a little disappointed, but at the same time, I feel like I wasn't giving it my full attention. Back to five star reads, we have Alpha by Besora Baru, translated by Sera Ardazoni. But this basically follows this character, Alpha, who lives in Abidjan, a place in Africa, sorry. And he wants to get to the Gardenor in Paris because his wife and son are there with, I think, her sister and he's trying to get there and, you know, have a better life than what he lives. It's tough, you know, it's, it's about refugees trying, like, people trying to escape a bad life and emigrate somewhere new. The only issue that I really had was I'm not a fan of the artwork. It's just not my kind of thing but that's not the important part of this book. This book is there to be more accessible to everyone about the plight of these people. I also read She Myself and I by Emma Young this month and I was a little disappointed. I gave it three stars. I don't know, I don't know, I can't even remember very much about what actually happens. Essentially the book is about this girl. Rosa has some sort of illness and basically her body is rendered useless, she's in a wheelchair, like all this kind of stuff and they do a brain transplant. They're getting this like dead girl's body and putting Rosa's brain into it so of course she looks completely different. I thought like it doesn't really deal with that I thought that makes sense like she ends up bumping into this like journalist and then she like runs away to like find out more about the girl whose body she has and I don't know I just found it a bit strange. I just felt that like it's such a short book yet it felt like it should have been shorter and I also just didn't like Rosa. Oh I fell asleep. <sighs> Speaking of short books that feel like they're dragging, The Island by David Alman, which is a World Book Day novella that's like barely a hundred pages long. It's about this girl and her dad. The mum's dead and they go to this island they used to always go to when they were growing up. The dad falls in love with this random American woman. The girl's annoyed about it and then she goes off and starts talking to Hassan. It just drags and in a weird way. I don't know how to describe it. I wanted more of Hassan and all this stuff and as much as it dragged I feel like this should have been a novel. Like I feel like there was aspects that were just kind of left unsaid. I don't know it was a very strange little book. For 10 pence I'm not complaining but I don't feel like my life has been enriched in any way by having this book in my life. However the next book I read very much improved my life and I need to buy a copy because this is a library copy. The Arrival by Sean Tan. This is why I'm filming this today before I take this book back because 
I know you probably all know about it, but can we just please appreciate the beauty? Oh my god. <laughs> I love it. There's no words in this book. It's silent. The thing that I love is it's basically another kind of immigration story. The way it's done, it has like these weird flowers and animals and stuff. It's got like strange symbols that we don't understand and it's supposed to sort of show us like what it's like to be that immigrant who doesn't understand anything of that world and I just I loved it I loved it I absolutely loved it the next book I read was a four star read and this was a buddy read with Kevin at Storyglyph we read The Girls by Emma Klein wow this is such a strange book like it wasn't at all what I expected I don't know how to describe this book like I'm sure you've all heard about this book it's about a cult. I actually like, I found myself, Kevin and I were talking about how somehow Emma Klein shows you what it's like to be in a cult without just showing you from the character's perspective. And what I mean by that is when Kevin and I were reading this, we kept saying, why is she not back at the ranch? Why is she not there? You know, we want to be there. Why aren't we there? Where's Russell? Where's Suzanne? And it was at the end, we kind of took a step back and went, fuck, we wanted to be in the cult. So that's what I feel like this book is. It's like a fucking cult. It keeps you there. It keeps you wanting to be there, even though you're like, I really shouldn't want that because it's not good. The reason that I didn't give this a full five stars was it's kind of got two plot lines in a sense. Like it's got the time of the cult and then it's got the time like sort of present day-ish. I think it's kind of set in like 2000 and that just didn't really add anything to the story for me. So it just kind of felt unnecessary. I think it would have done so much better just at one timeline. The other thing that I wanted from this was more of Suzanne's background. Now the book isn't about Suzanne but there's just certain things that she does like things like the way she acts at some certain points. I want to know why she did that and it irks me that I don't know but this was definitely a very unexpected read. I also read my like first manga it was an e man an e manga. It was an e arc from Net Galley, and that is La Magnifique Grande Scene Volume One by Kuvi, and it's all about like a, a little girl who goes to watch her neighbor in a ballet, falls in love with it, wants to do ballet, and she's like idolizing this girl. And my ex musical theater student Heart loves it, and it was just so much fun, and it was so cute, and I loved the aspect of it being a normal girl that our main character idolised and I also appreciated seeing the flaws in the idol and I love the fact that our main character doesn't progress as well and as fast as she wants to. So we see her having to deal with disappointment. The message that she sends, it's like I don't want to give it away but basically there's something she's extremely upset about and people are like judging her for it but she goes out there and does what she needs to do and shows everyone that it doesn't matter that she's not as amazing as everyone else because she's amazing in her own way and I just loved it. Next, we have the book that I mentioned in my last 10 book tag. Then there were none by BP Smith. Now, I have tabs, I can't even remember. I think pink was for basically just like, what the fuck, for goodness sake kind of thing. Purple was for bits that made me laugh or like emotional. Someone in the comments was saying like, how funny it was that I said this isn't good but I finished it in one sitting and I want to elaborate. It's not a bad book. It's just one of those books that doesn't really care about being realistic and sometimes that's what you need. Like I'm not talking about fantasy, I'm talking about fiction that could be set, in, that is set in this world but that's just so far-fetched that you're like really though and you know you've got to take them with a pinch of salt you've got to say yeah that's never ever gonna happen in real life but okay and it's just crazy basically the premise of this book so this girl this woman and four other women are up for an audition for a role that could basically change a girl's life and she realizes that like they all fit the casting call better so she's like I'm gonna get rid of them and you're like what the fuck how does this aspiring actress suddenly decide to become a serial killer and I'm gonna tell you what happens on page five because it's page five it's not a spoiler but basically she's taken a picture of the other actresses like she telling you about them on her agent's desk and 
in the picture she can see the photo frame that he has on his desk that she's always assumed has been off his family. But it's not. <laughs> it's a framed poem and the poem I'm not going to read it all out, but it starts with five pretty actresses at an audition on call. However, one sits alone and plots the other's tragic downfall. And then it lists the other, like, the actresses and it tells you, like, this one likes skiing and she dies in a skiing accident. And then at the end it says something about how the fifth one's full of joy and glee because she's got the part, but is she really that happy? But we just read about the other actresses and it's like the first actress likes skiing. so. The poem is about these actresses and obviously the main character is then like, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna follow the poem and I'm just like, what the fuck? And of course, the police eventually make a connection that these women are dying and they all have the same agent and they go and visit him and he's like, oh my god, they're all dead and he genuinely has no idea and the police don't even fucking see this poem and I'm like, how would the agent have this poem and not realise, like, Unless, of course, I did kind of start thinking at the end because, right, fuck it, I'm gonna be a bit spoilery, so if you don't want to know, bugger off. Basically, it turns out this girl has killed, like, everyone she fucking knows, and her, like, ex and his, like, side chick, I think it was, like, his, his assistant or whatever that he was having an affair with, she's, like, killed them and chopped them up and their heads are, like, in the freezer and they, like, talk to her. <laughs> and I'm like... She must be psychotic, you know? She must have, like, hallucinations. So maybe that poem doesn't actually exist. But even so, apart from the, like, husband and that, because she, like, axes them, everyone she kills, her family, these actresses, I feel like there's some other random person. She kills them all with this, like, one gun, and I'm like, you know, like... Everything she does, like the skiing accident, she's trying to make the like the lift fall so she shoots it so it falls down and she's just always shooting things and I'm like, this is so much more complex than you need to make it. <laughs> oh, and that's why I just kept reading because it was so ridiculous. I was like, how the fuck can she keep using this one gun? How are they not discovering these bullets? How are they not realizing the gun it came from? It was driving me insane and it was just such fun and you know it was a short book and I am so glad that Barry contacted me and asked me if I wanted this book to review because it made me happy and that's all you can ask for with a book. That and it was entertaining and books are to provide entertainment. Sometimes you just need something out of like just non-realistic, just something completely out of reality and that is what this provided me. Whether that's Barry's intention I don't know so I'm very sorry if you wanted it to be like a proper serious crime book but I would not hesitate to read more from this author just for the sake of having a proper escape from our world, our reality and yeah. <laughs> oh and Finally, ish, Weird Things Customers Say in Bookshops by Jen Campbell. I found the first one in a charity shop and was like, I need it. And it was just as good as the second one. And yeah, there's the guy asking about books by Jane Eyre. Five stars, great. Takes me back to my bookseller days. I also quickly just want to go through a couple other books. First is Gotham Academy by a bunch of people. This is volume one. I borrowed it from my library. I just wasn't getting into it. I'm not a DC fan, Marvel fan, any of that, superheroes, Batman, and I'm just, I'm just not into it. I should finish Order of the Phoenix by the end of this month. I still have a couple days left and I'm on chapter 34, so I've only got this much to go. It's gonna be a five star read obviously. Okay, so those are all the books I've read in May slash I'm, I'm reading slash gave up with. I have been filming for nearly 45 minutes so sorry future Emma in editing. Pray to lord this gets cut down. I'm gonna go and probably read hopefully. I will probably see you guys next with my May book haul. Also, I'm just looking at my haul for the month. Fuck. <laughs> At this point in time, on the 27th of May, I have not beat last month's record, but I'm close. So it might happen, it might not. I hate myself. <laughs> Let me know if you guys have read any of these or if any of them interest you. 
and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye! Oh. I just went to pick up all the books for a thumbnail and I dropped them. <laughs> We're gonna cheat. That'll do. Don't tell anyone that's not the books I read.